Amazon is coming off its best holiday season ever, and analysts expect the company's revenue to surge a whopping 28 percent this year to $137 billion. But believe it or not, there are still Americans who avoid shopping on Amazon, 17 percent of U.S. primary shoppers to be exact. Joining me, joining me to discuss is WSJ Corporate Deputy Bureau Chief Andrew Lavalley and Brooklyn resident Chris Atwater, who is one of the rare Amazon holdouts profiled in our Wall Street Journal piece. Great to see you both. Thank so you. we'll start with you. How difficult was it for you and your team of writers to actually find people who don't shop on Amazon? Uh, well, it's a shrinking number of people, but they are out there. And that 17%, kind of depending on how you look at it, is either a sign of how strong this company is or a sign of how many people are still holding out. And how did you go about finding these people? Did you walk into <clears throat> stores? Uh, did it take a lot of emailing? It, it was a mix of a couple of things. And we were looking for uh, people with all different sorts of reasons for not shopping on Amazon, whether it's that it's just not very convenient for them, right. whether they have a specific problem with it, or whether there's other things like they're trying to cut their budget. Right, which brings us to you, Chris. But first, I want to point out, you are not the typical Amazon abstainer, uh, should I say. We have a graphic that shows the average age of a non-Amazon shopper is 57, annual income is $45,000. So you're a little bit younger. You're 26. You live in Brooklyn. You're a very mobile, um, technology-friendly kind of person. Sure. Why don't you shop on Amazon? <laughs> What's the deal? Sure. So um, I just find it a little inconvenient. So I'm someone that likes to see the product I'm going to get before I go and buy it. So I think I like that connection that you still have in store where you can see it. You know what it's going to be. You know what it's going to look like. You try it on, and then you purchase it. I'm also uh, not a fan of the logistics. So for me in Brooklyn, I do have some difficulty getting packages. So it's actually uh, even more of a hassle to order from Amazon because I end up going to UPS or FedEx to go pick it up several days later. Interesting. So, it, so you don't, it doesn't necessarily get dropped off on your doorstep is what you're saying? Yeah, exactly. Is there, do you use Amazon competitors or you just prefer to shop in stores? I think I just prefer to shop in stores. Um, again, you wouldn't go in and buy clothing without trying it on first. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of the same way with most of my purchases where I like to see what I'm getting. Right. And Andrew, you touched on this a little bit, but what are the big reasons why people don't use Amazon? Um, some of it are reasons that Chris talked about, you know, that they don't have an easy place to receive packages. It's not that convenient for them. There are some people who still prefer to just walk into a store and look for what they're, they're, uh, they're shopping for. Right. Um, some people specifically avoid Amazon because they have a problem with its uh, business practices or policies or something like that. Um, we also found people who found the selection of Amazon a little overwhelming. You know, they would search for something and find 50 different options huh. for it. And yeah. so they like going to a place where there's fewer. They just, you're right. That's a really interesting point. I haven't heard that one before. Chris, is there anything Amazon could do to lure you in, to get you to go shopping on their website, use their services? Um, I think just in general, uh, until the service is able to deliver to my door, until maybe they do cut down on some of the clutter so I can go in and see what I'm going to get, mm -hmm. or maybe a way to visualize with video the product that you're going to buy, um, I think until then, I'll continue to go in the store and buy. Have you had any bad experiences buying online? Is that so part of the problem? I, I haven't necessarily had a bad experience. I've had items come that weren't, aver or weren't what they advertised or they didn't fit right, or maybe I didn't like them. So I think maybe that has also turned me off of going online and, and staying in retail. Yeah, and last but not least, what about Amazon products? Um, because we've seen, especially with the holiday season, these Alexa products were huge this year, millions and millions shipped. Are people, will that draw people to Amazon? Maybe they don't use Amazon Prime, but is that a way Amazon's bringing more people into the fold? That's what Amazon is hoping for. Um, and, and like you said, some of these products were huge sellers over the holidays. Um, a lot of people looking around for them. And another thing, thing Amazon is doing is trying to reach some of these people who prefer going to stores. Amazon Go, this experiments with a, a grocery store. Uh, you know, Amazon is looking for ways that it can reach people who aren't doing all of their shopping online yet. Right. All right, last question. Any fears about cyber ha like hacking or your data being stolen? Is that a big concern for non-Amazon users? Is that something you worry about? So um, I, I do worry about it a little bit. Once you put it out there, you can't get it back. So I try and be a little careful with my computer security on what information I'm putting out there. All right, Chris and Andrew, thank you so much for being here. Thank Such you. an interesting story. Thank you.